Hi everyone, Married Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome. Today we're going to do a um, what to do with your edges. If you don't like cutting off your edges when you print your digitals. But first, just a little show and tell. Um, tea treat holders are the newest things I've made for the craft show and they have a little self-closure pretty self-explanatory I think I'm gonna sell these singly so that's about all that's new on that front so what you'll need are your digitals you'll need some crayons some pastels maybe, text stamps, and border stamps. I'm going to do the most difficult and an iron. I forgot to say that. I'm going to do the most difficult cumbersome ones first and then I'm going to pause the video and restart so I can get back to my usual setup and then I'll do the, the the borders with the stamps but many of you you don't always like to cut off your borders when you print something so I've been looking for ways to um, camouflage them and I've come up with a few things Generally, most people care about keeping the top and bottom border when they make a book and the side edges <clears throat> can usually be any length, cut off, um, tore off, wet paper torn, or uh, the border queen is probably uniquely Ella. And I'll post a video of hers um, on how she um, does page edges. So I'm going to start with the crayons because that's the uh, most... Using the iron is the most uh, cumbersome and uh, I want it out of the way. So I'm just taking a piece of parchment here to protect my iron. Get one of my digitals. And for right now I'm probably just going to do the top, top and the bottom. And you're just going to heat up your paper. This is similar to the using the candle and then you're going to take your crayon and you're just going to melt it along the edge like so till it no longer melts And that will completely camouflage that edge. I'm just using black on this one so you can see it. This is also a great way to um, edge your ATC cards. And as you can see, if you if you care about keeping your edge straight, you can put something along there to align it. But that will give you a rough edge, and you cannot tell that there is a white edge there at all. And you can do that in any color. 
just um, grab a different color here. Um, my pink is too short. Um, okay, I'm going to try this melon. See what happens. Not exactly straight, but it will also completely camouflage that border. I would probably, it's up to you, but I would probably go with a black or a neutral. But you can match your papers if you want. So that's technique one, and it goes very fast. So, okay, I'm going to pause, turn off the iron, and then I'll be back with the remaining techniques. I'll be right back. So here's the um, crayon technique. It doesn't look like a marker. It doesn't look like anything that you would typically think. It doesn't look like ink. I mean, it kind of looks like ink, but it doesn't um, you can't tell that it's crayon. However, if you wanted to, you could also color your borders with crayon. And it's such a small, um, let me see, let me try to get a color here that matches. It's such a small uh, area that you can't really tell it's crayon if you just wanted to attempt coloring. So that's another thing. I was going to do what to do with your backs as well if you don't like back printing, but that would take too long to combine both, so I'm going to separate them into two different videos. So the second, um, the second one you can do is take text from your book pages and you can glue them around your page, around on your borders, and that would be appropriate for a journal. And there, it's usually most lines in a book, as long as you're, they will pretty much be the same size as a border. So you can do that. Um, and then this last technique is one that I learned from Bohemian Crafting. And that is, um, you're just going to take a, wait, I want a vintage photo. You're just going to take some ink. Blend in your edges a little bit. So they're not so white. It's pretty terrible up there in the corner, but you get the drift. Start off the page when you're using a brush. And then you're going to take 
whatever color you choose, but I'm probably going to choose gray. And then um, I'm going to get a text here. Stamp with a fairly straight line. And then um, just need the top covered with ink. And then you're just going to stamp. along your edge I'm not getting a ghost here so I have to keep re-inking maybe if I was using black so then you're just going to do something like that along your edge and it blends it, it it just adds another unique element to your page so let me move along to another edge here ink that up a little bit So I hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a happy Mother's Day. We had a nice day. My husband made three day lasagna because he makes everything from scratch. Now some of you might I don't particularly, it doesn't particularly bother me to have a border on a page, but um, you can use your border stamps. So maybe, let's see, no, I'm, these are new, I haven't used them yet, so I'm just going to get a short one here. Do a border. I guess I'll just stick with gray. Doesn't even look like it's I'm not going to get a ghost, so I'm going to have to re-ink. So you, you're probably saying, well, why would I do this? <laughs> I might as well just take all the time to cut off the borders, but sometimes the other issue that happens is that you don't cut them off evenly and uh, as I said um, most people don't care about the outer edges of the page they um, these edges they just care about the top and the bottom so this is a way to, um, because your paper is always the same size, this is a way to make sure that your top and your bottom stay the same size. So that's the benefit of doing a faux, faux 
info at your border along your paper. Another thing you can try are with your pastels. And I probably didn't leave them over here because I'm going to need a soft cloth to wipe these pastels. Um, let's see. And they're upside down. Oops. Let me just get a gray here so I can stay with the program. If you have a square pastel like I have, it's easier to keep a straight line. Okay. My cloth is wet. Let me, um, I have to grab a napkin here. Sorry about that. I moved them. I moved them off the table because I wasn't going to be, thought, forgot that I needed a soft cloth. So you're going to want to um, rub off the excess, otherwise you're going to, um, it's going to um, rub off on whoever handles the pages. So this is basically if you just want a tint. But it's dry and it's not going to damage your pages. And after you've rubbed off enough, um, it also blends nicely into the page. But after you've rubbed off enough, no more is going to come off. But that's what you have to watch out for on that. So I think that's it. The crayon, the gluing your text, um, the stamping, and you could also um, you could also do your two effects. You could do your pastels. And then if you wanted to stamp on top of your pastel, you could do that. And that will give your page a nice little border. So, I'm still sorry about my rant last time, but my husband, for the first part of this, was running the phone camera. <laughs> so that I could make a short. And that's pretty much what I'm going to have to resort to to um, do a short and have it be in the right ratio because the vid video editing software did not work at all after, I don't know, 15, 20 hours of 
messing around with it and according to you, judging by the statistics YouTube is sharing shorts at a rate like 10 to 1 over videos and that's probably because they get paid by the click although I'm not sure but I'm sure it's not really there to benefit the creators but um, they just are worried about having to compete with TikTok but anyway that's my problem TikTok is YouTube's problem and I'm sorry about that, but I really didn't feel like adding another learning curve to all of this. And I still haven't had time to um, figure out my giveaway. I'll do that this week, and hopefully next week will be a giveaway. But that's all I have for today. Um, what to do with your borders if you are don't feel like cutting them off and um, this is a nice I thought that um, when I saw Bohemian Crafting do that I thought you know that doesn't look that doesn't look bad at all so then I just started playing around so that I could add some more for you and um, of course there is uniquely Ella on how to work with these pages the crayon the crayon effect works on a lot of things ACC cards um, journal cards all kinds of things if you want to put a little usually they would put a black border around ATC cards. So, okay. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.